In this video, we'll be looking at some best practices when uploading videos to YouTube and the actual process of uploading videos to YouTube. So if that sounds like something that is of interest to you, then stick around because this video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. Now, a little while ago, I did a whole introductory video to the uh, YouTube Studio interface uh, and go, went through all the different sort of menus and sections and options that you have available to you within there uh, to give a bit of an overview of how to use it, really. So I'll leave a link to that video up in the top corner and also down in the description. Uh, and this is sort of a follow on for it from it, because what I didn't cover in that video was exactly how you upload a video to YouTube. Uh, now, incidentally, I did also do a video on how to set up a live stream to YouTube. So I'll link to that one in the top corner as well and also in the description, of course. But let's get on to the actual uh, uploading of a video to YouTube because there are a few sort of best practices that you might want to follow. Uh, now, there is a little way that you can get coached on this <laughs> on an ongoing basis by a little thing called TubeBuddy. But I'll talk about that a little bit later because it's something that I use and I find it very good, useful to uh, just remind me to do all of the things that I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, although I've got a bit, bit of a confession to make. There's a couple of things that I've not really been keeping on top of lately. So I'll touch on that a little bit later as well. Uh, but first of all, let me just go straight over to my screen sharing and I can show you here we are in my uh, page. Uh, by the way, my uh, subscriber count is creeping up. If you haven't subscribed or already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, turn on those notifications so that you get notified the moment that I make any new videos. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's come over to create a video. Uh, and by the way, if you are a subscriber and there's anything that you think that I could be doing better, I'm always open to feedback and uh, creative criticism and uh, also suggestions of anything that you'd like to see covered on the channel as well. So uh, I have been known to uh, bump up videos up my list <laughs> uh, if somebody have uh, requested specific videos and also just create uh, entirely new videos for people who have asked for them. So feel free to uh, leave your suggestions and comments uh, in the uh, in the description below as well. So I'm going to go over to here to the uh, upload video. So I've clicked on the create menu at the top and then upload video. Uh, if you watch the streaming one before, then that's where you set up a stream. But we're just going to upload a video. And then once the little window pops up, did I even press that? Uh, clearly not. There we go. <laughs> I don't know quite what happened there. It took a little bit of time, didn't it? But there you go. So uh, I'm just going to drag and drop a little test recording that I did onto here to show you the process uh, because it would be nice and quick to upload as well. So you just drag it on. You don't actually have to wait for it to upload. It will just immediately pop up into this uh, this box and uh, it will give it the name of the uh, the file as a default, which I call test recording, as you can see down here. So that is the name that it has given it. And uh, full disclosure, if suddenly there's been a bit of a jump on the screen, it's because I inadvertently pressed my finish button on my stream deck instead of uh, the uh, little zoom button <laughs> that I wanted to press. So uh, I have to stitch these two files together afterwards, but never mind. Uh, so there you go. You can see the, uh, the name of the file, uh, the title of the video is being given the same as the title of the, uh, uh, the file that I uploaded. Uh, the description has already pre-populated with some information. Now you can set a, uh, a sort of default uh, introduction that you want to have included. So I have all of this at the bottom of all my videos. It includes uh, some links to uh, some of the software and programs that I use uh, and a few other sort of useful links and things like that at the bottom as well. Uh, so I just have that going in there as a default. And I explained how to do that in that other video that I mentioned, which was all about the YouTube interface. Uh, and in there I talked about how you can set these sort of presets uh, up from the beginning. Uh, so I just normally go into here and then I would uh, just click down a couple of paragraphs, a couple of set, uh, rows rather lines, and then uh, type in my new description for whatever this video was going to be about. Uh, now I'm not going to actually go in and edit this too much in here because I want to show you uh, some of the best practices and I'm basically going to steal them from TubeBuddy because it tells me what to do <laughs> every time I upload a video. So I think that that is yeah, useful. Uh, so we'll come in, have a look at that uh, afterwards. Uh, so here you've got a place to upload a thumbnail and it's simply a case of dragging the thumbnail and dropping it onto here. 
If not, then it will, if you don't upload a, a thumbnail manually, it will just pull out some random uh, frames from the video and you can actually select which frame to use as a thumbnail. Obviously, I totally recommend creating a proper custom thumbnail. Uh, here, you've got the ability to add it to a playlist as well by clicking the little drop down, and then you can just select which uh, uh, playlist you want to add it to. So I suppose I should add this to my YouTube channel tools playlist and then click done and you can highlight multiple different uh, playlists if you want and then I'll come down here a little bit further and uh, this one is just default I've set that not uh, not made for children and then there's a the little show more icon but I'm not actually going to edit this all in here I want to uh, just sort of click through this and we'll come into the main editing interface uh, afterwards because it's got a bit more information on it there and I'll leave end screens and all of these things uh, as well but we'll be able to just obviously do them as you go through them in here as well but I'm just going to get this loaded into the interface first so that uh, I can show you some of these best practices uh, no copyrights found, fortunately, because I use Epidemic Sound. So incidentally, if you are a creator and are looking to use music in your videos, then I can highly recommend uh, heading over to uh, Epidemic Sound. And the way to get there is to go to takeonetech.io slash epidemic and uh, sign up for a free trial there. And uh, that gives you an access to a huge catalogue of uh, really high quality music that you can use in your videos and sound effects by the way i'm not too big on the sound effects personally but uh, i know that some people can carry them off <laughs> i personally can't so uh, but i do have music obviously at the um, uh, beginning and the end of my videos and also in my intro and i use it on my live streams and things like that as well so epidemic just gives you access to as i say a huge library and allows you to whitelist your uh, your youtube channel your uh, facebook page uh, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you want to use it, uh, or maybe even on your podcast as well. And uh, yeah, you get access to this library and then you don't have to worry about copyright strikes. So uh, you hopefully, when you're on this page in YouTube, you won't ever need to worry about uh, any copyright infringements or anything like that. So I highly, highly recommend that. Uh, and by the way, the quality of the music in there is just absolutely excellent, proper, uh, <laughs> real musicians rather than just sort of generic uh, stock music. So uh, in here you have the ability to choose whether you want to uh, make it a private video that only you can uh, watch. Uh, you can actually share a link by email to people with uh, that, but it is essentially private. The next option is unlisted, which means that it won't be shown in anybody's uh, feeds. It won't be put into any searches or anything like that on YouTube. Uh, however, anybody who does have the link for the uh, video, which is by the way here, this video link, anybody who has that link would be able to watch it and they would be able to forward that link on to other people and they could watch it if that is what you wanted uh, or the other option is uh, public there is also the uh, option to set as instant premiere and with the instant premiere it is essentially the video is playing but it is intended for you to be sort of watching along with it uh, so that you can sort of have it as a premiere and comment and so on with anybody else watching at the time but it's not a live stream as such if you see what I mean the next option is to schedule and so if you click on that one you can just basically schedule a date when you want it to go live uh, and that would be then public uh, but you can also uh, set it as a premiere at a particular time as well. So uh, I'm going to just come back to this one and I'm just going to make this a private video for the moment or an unlisted video uh, and then uh, this will be a fairly good example. So if I click on save and then it'll think about it for a moment and save the video. And you can see at the bottom, by the way, the uh, upload status. So it doesn't actually have to have uploaded, uh, the upload doesn't have to have completed for you to complete this process. It will continue to upload in the background. As it happens, it was a pretty short file and the upload has completed. So from here, you can uh, copy the link and uh, share that if you want, or you can simply just click on here to share it out to any uh, of your social profiles. Uh, but as you will remember, we didn't actually go through the process of setting up all of that information so I want to come and show you uh, how you can add sort of more complete information than you can add in that uh, first full window because some things you will need to actually come back into uh, to, to adjust potentially so let me just close that down and then the place where you'll find this is in your content so I'll click in my uh, content section you will remember this from the first video about the uh, <laughs> YouTube studio interface so this is my little test recording here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on that to go and edit the details and here is where I'm going to sneakily share with you some of the uh, top tips that I get from TubeBuddy uh, so just 
before I go on, what is TubeBuddy? Well, TubeBuddy is, as you'll find out, uh, a sort of interface, which is, uh, or a service rather, that is very deeply integrated with uh, YouTube. Uh, and it allows you to do things like searching for uh, optimized keywords, things like that, uh, assessing your uh, YouTube channel and your videos uh, for the performance that they, uh, they have and also how well they are set up. If you have been uh, following the best practices and so on, it gives you little uh, check marks to make sure that you have done all of the things that you're supposed to do for each video which I'll show you in a moment uh, and yeah it's a really uh, good service I believe it's eight dollars a month or 7.99 for the basic level and if you've got less than a thousand subscribers then it's actually half price so only four dollars a month but for me it is worth the price because it enables me to uh, go through this process of uploading videos and just serves as my little coach and checklist uh, to make sure that I am ticking all these boxes. Although, as I'll show you, I'm not quite ticking every box at the moment, so uh, I need to up my game a little bit there. Uh, and it also does have a really, uh, really advanced keyword search, which I've demonstrated on a video I did all about uh, TubeBuddy itself. So I'll leave a link to that video up in the top corner and in the description as well. Uh, and so with all of that, waffling <laughs> complete let me get back to my uh, screen sharing uh, so now here we have got the video de uh, details loaded up and you can actually see that TubeBuddy sits up in the top corner here so we've got a whole set of menu items here but I'm not going to go through all of these because uh, as I say I did cover those in another video uh, but what I want to show you is the sort of be best practices for actually uh, the video upload itself and here you can see we've got exactly the same information that we've just looked at the uh, title and so on and what I did was purposely uh, purposefully didn't do this too well <laughs> because down here you can see the TubeBuddy integration and it's telling us uh, best practices so this is the little checklist that you get with the TubeBuddy interface that will help you as you are uh, uploading your videos and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just actually tell you what it's suggesting so that you can learn from this and uh, then if you want to uh, see more of this TubeBuddy goodness then you can go over to takeonetech.io slash TubeBuddy and try it out for yourself uh, but this is uh, yeah best practices as I say for uploading your videos so uh, here we can see the uh, the first one that we have on the list uh, down here you can see I've got one of eight completed so I'm if I click on show completed it will show what I've uh, done so I've added it to a playlist so that is one that is uh, a best practice is to sort of be able to organize your videos as you start growing your channel to have more and more uh, then being able to add them to a playlist and in that other video I did about the YouTube studio interface I covered all about playlists how to set them up and how to have them featuring on your channel so there we go I've got one little green tick uh, we're obviously aiming for eight ticks here uh, but at the moment I've only got one. Now the next thing is the title should be between 20 and 70 characters long. Now if you come up to the top here it does actually tell you the character count and uh, with YouTube the uh, maximum you've got is 100 characters so at the moment I'm only using 14 of 100 characters. Uh, so I suppose there is a thinking that obviously if you use the full amount of 100 characters, maybe it takes up a little bit too much space. People aren't going to necessarily read it all. Uh, and so here they're recommending title between 20 and 70 characters. I tend to always aim for the higher end of that just to be able to get in as much of the uh, uh, in information that I want to uh, get over about what's included in the video. So I tend to aim for 70 characters, to be honest with you. Uh, and that's just uh, my personal preference. Uh, but here you can see that is a sort of be best practice to go for. Uh, the next one is to uh, add chapters. Now, chapter marks is the one thing that I've been a bit lax on, really. Well, that and also uh, cards. So uh, we'll come into cards in a moment, but uh, cards are where I, I say I'll leave a link up in the top corner and that little bar appears up in the top corner with a link to another video. Uh, so but here we're talking about chapters and chapters are the markers that you get on a video along the uh, the bottom of the, the sort of oops sorry for knocking the microphone along the sort of bar at the bottom which mark different sections in the video. Now why is this important? Well it's important for a couple of reasons. First of all it is just generally uh, a good navigation aid for people who are watching your videos that they can sort of skip forward to a particular chapter uh, or if they are re-watching a video because you've got such great content in there and they keep going back for more uh, then <laughs> having those markers in so that they can easily find the section especially when it's things like the sort of things that I'm doing which are sort of tutorials people may want to go back to a specific point to uh, to watch them again 
and especially so if you're making sort of longer form videos as well. Uh, so uh, that's sort of one reason. But also for search, it is a very important uh, factor in getting found on YouTube uh, and also just in Google. And let me just give you an example of uh, this. So I've just done a quick Google search for Stream Deck profiles. It's something that I did a video about recently. And so if you do a search for Stream Deck profiles uh, in, YouTube, in, in Google, not in YouTube, in Google, you will get the usual results. So how can I add Stream Deck profiles, things like this, and you'll get some links to some pages. But given that you, uh, Google owns YouTube, surprisingly, they do feature YouTube quite heavily. And in fact, it's right at the top here. You'll often see something like this. And you may have often wondered as well, how does it know where the little snippet of uh, information that I'm looking for is in the video because you can see here we've got a video and it says six key moments in this video relate to profiles how to create a stream deck profile method one create a new profile in stream deck and so on and so on and so on so here you can see the actual timestamp markers where these uh, particular bits of information are and that's because uh, there is actually two reasons going on here the first and predominant one though is because the uh, the uh, content creator has put in these timestamps, these chapter markers. The other way is that uh, Google's getting very clever at, uh, not that it ever wasn't, but <laughs> is getting very clever at actually uh, listening to the uh, the audio and generating captions or you uploading your own captions and uh, yeah, just actually figuring out where in the videos this stuff is uh, being mentioned. But chapter markers certainly help and having them there in your descriptions in your titles, in your headers, and also in your chapter markers, uh, all add to the search engine optimization of your channel. So let me just show you how easy this is to do in theory. <laughs> Uh, so if I wanted to add chapter markers in here, let me just take you through to a video which I have done. And I've purposely chosen a long video. This was uh, my longest video to date, actually, at 4 hours 24 minutes long. And it was my, uh, I called it the Zero to Hero tutorial, uh, <laughs> which is a bit of a bold claim, I suppose. But it was all about how to use Ecamm Live, which is the software that I'm using to produce this video. And it was all about how to basically go from a, almost a clean install of that all the way through to a fully built out uh, live production environment which is what I'm using here and incidentally uh, it's probably a good time to mention <laughs> Ecamm Live because for the whole month of July uh, in 2021 which is where we are at the moment they have a 30% discount offer so if you head over to uh, takeonetech.io slash uh, Ecamm or Ecamm Live uh, either of those will get you there uh, then that will take you over to the uh, the site where you can download a free trial and give it a go yourself if you've heard about OBS uh, open broadcast software then it's similar to that except far more user friendly uh, and just a much nicer experience in my humble opinion I've tried them both and I opted for the Ecamm uh, route myself and as I say it's what I use to do all of the sort of live production of this video and and all my videos on the fly in one take highly recommend that piece of software but in any case so this was a four and a half hour video and yes I did that in one one take I sat down for four and a half hours and made this video <laughs> uh, and so uh, this video that I'm talking about here and so obviously having that broken up by chapter markers was uh, pretty much essential if anyone was going to watch it and uh, get some value from it and be able to go back to the point where they were if they didn't want to sit through four and a half hours of me which I doubt anybody really does um, but the way that you add in the chapter markers is simply a case of just adding it into the description somewhere uh, you don't need any special formatting or anything like that the only thing you need to do is just make sure that you put in timestamps and then the title of that particular chapter and you always need to start with this uh, zero zero colon zero zero and uh, call that whatever you want I've called it intro you can call it whatever uh, but that sort of signifies to uh, YouTube that that is the start of your um, uh, chapter markers and then you just simply go down and just put it in this format of minutes and seconds minutes and seconds all the way down and if you do actually get to long videos like this one of mine then you just simply add on the hours in front of that as well all the way down to uh, well where did we get to four hours something four hours 19 was my summing up so there you go and just add in those titles and then when you watch your uh, video or somebody somebody else hopefully watches your video they'll see all these little chapter markers 
on your video and then when they hover over them they'll get these little uh, snippets of information pop up so that they can see where to go to and crucially uh, Google and YouTube will be searching these particular uh, uh, titles that you've given them the ch chapter titles and uh, taking that into consideration when ranking your video so it's definitely an important one to do and this is where I've been a bit lax recently I'm afraid because it does involve for me because I do these videos in one take it does involve me going back and watching them uh, to in order to figure out exactly what the time stamps are for these uh, these um, chapter markers so imagine that I had to go back and watch my four-hour video uh, albeit at double speed <laughs> to actually pull out these now you can obviously as somebody pointed out to me uh, get a VA to do this <laughs> if you really want to uh, but not everybody is in a position necessarily to want to do that uh, but uh, that is one option and it's probably one I'm going to look at uh, relatively soon actually because it doesn't take an awful lot of time for somebody to do and somebody who can probably do it for a hell of a lot cheaper than uh, you could do it yourself if you were sitting down and having to watch all your videos back never mind the uh, mental scarring that you might get from watching your own videos <laughs> So in any case, that is what that one is. So that is, uh, if I, I need to go back to my other video, and that is what uh, chapters are. Uh, so definitely a good thing to do if you are wanting more and more people to find your videos, which presumably you are if you're putting your stuff out into the world in the first place. The uh, next one, uh, uh, this is a best practice, but it's uh, not a huge amount that you can do about it, except uh, it says get a like on Facebook. So uh, YouTube isn't the only place you should be sharing your video. Make sure you tell your connections on Facebook about it. So I suppose it is best practice because it's just about sharing your videos to uh, other social platforms in the first place. But then here it will, uh, TubeBuddy will detect if you have actually got a like on the video on Facebook and uh, it will mark that with a little tick. And incidentally, if you do want to know how to uh, easily cross post your videos from uh, YouTube to social media. Uh, guess what? I did a video about it, <laughs> about how you can automate the process. So I'll leave a video to that up in the top corner as well. Bear in mind, all of these things that I'm telling you that I'm going to leave a link in the top corner, I have to actually physically go back and do this. So that is part of this process is making sure that I do go back and do these things. Uh, and we'll come on to that in a little moment. The next one is adding more tags. So if I scroll down for a moment, uh, a little bit further down, we've got an area here where you can add tags. So uh, let me just say that uh, this one is going to be about uh, YouTube, for example. Uh, YouTube uh, content creation, let me call it that. So you just simply type a tag in and press the comma and it will uh, pop in like that so you'll notice that that is now uh, it's got a sort of little box around it and a little cross next to it so you can delete it that way as well but that is now a tag that you've got uh, another one of TubeBuddy's uh, great little features is this window that comes underneath where it will actually suggest a whole load of other uh, tags that it thinks are similar I've uh, mentioned this before, so I'm not going to play on the TubeBuddy stuff too much in this video. It's more about the overall best practices, but it is worth a mention. And you can sort these tags by relevance, by the keyword score. So key, uh, key, uh, TubeBuddy gives uh, keywords a particular score based on a number of different factors. So you can search by that, or you can just look at by search traffic. So which keywords are getting searched for most. But as I say, this is a uh, TubeBuddy specific uh, little feature down here. The best practice part that you want to remember if you're not going to sign up for TubeBuddy is that in the keywords you have up to 500 characters. So uh, if you are only using a few of those, you're not really uh, giving yourself the best possible chance to get found by keywords. Obviously, you don't want to put things in there that are not related to your video. Uh, that certainly will be harmful rather than helpful. But if you can think of other ways to uh, express <laughs> what it is that is contained within your video in the content and how people might uh, be searching in order to find your video, then do fill out this with as many as you can think of and uh, ideally up to as close to 500 as you can get because it all helps with the, uh, as I say, the search engine optimization. So the next one is, uh, it says add more tags, uh, which we've just looked at, but the next one is add tags to your title. So what you are looking for is everything being 
a single sort of cohesive message that you're putting out there. Bearing in mind that you will have uh, captions, we'll come on to captions in a moment as well, uh, on your either ones that you generate or auto-generated. So uh, the YouTube uh, <laughs> algorithm, if you like, or the, uh, the mind behind it will be able to uh, look at the content of your video. It will also be able to look at the content of your description and the information that you have in your tags in your uh, your uh, cards and also in your your timestamps I'm forgetting the word there chapters is the word that I was scrambling around to try and find there in your chapters but also in your title and you want all of this to seem relatable and relevant and all sort of a cohesive message so we certainly don't want any tags as I say that aren't related to your video but also if you have got tags in there make sure those tags are also featuring in the title because presumably that is what you think people are going to be searching for so trying to work those into the title is a certainly a best practice so uh, TubeBuddy is just noticing that we've got a title and we've got a couple of tags but they don't actually match at the moment so uh, make sure that you do have those those tags in your titles now the next one down is uh, info cards and that is as I say those little things where you say I'm going to link to another video or whatever up in the top corner uh, I'll do a little demonstration of that afterwards uh, I'll just cover this last one because there's a few things to point out about that uh, the last one here is add an end screen and this is when your video is over uh, if you go to a screen if like I go to a screen a bit like this where I say if you've enjoyed this video I've got more videos uh, coming up next uh, but don't go anywhere it's not really the end <laughs> those sort of end screens where it pops up with a couple of videos and things like that uh, and maybe a subscribe button that is the end screen so make sure that you uh, do set one of those uh, guess what I made a video about it <laughs> I made a video about how to add in an end screen and also how to set this up with uh, uh, the the um, uh, Ecamm live to create the end screen in that as well so I'll leave a link to that video. Now, one thing to bear in mind uh, with uh, info cards is you can only have five in a video. So I think I've used up my five, so I mustn't promise that I'm going to link to another video in the top corner now if I've used all five. I'll have to watch the video back to see if I really have or if it's four, I can't quite remember. But uh, yeah, add in that end screen. Now the info cards, that is another one where you actually have to go in and add it manually. So I'll just come up to the top uh, and here is where we add in the end screen. So as I say, I've made a separate video about that. So I shall, uh, in fact, I'll just quickly show you because it is quite straightforward. <laughs> uh, save you going and rooting around for another video somewhere in my channel. Uh, so the end screen, uh, this can come on up to 20 seconds before the end of the video and it will automatically pull up some uh, sort of previous uh, end screens that you've got. So this one just here is the one that I've used last and it's actually the template that I've got for uh, my all of my videos really uh, because what it's done here is over in this window it's just pulled up a uh, an example uh, or rather the last uh, 20 seconds, 20 seconds out from the end of my video and you can see that I've uh, I time everything so that I've got this little frame here and I can uh, pop in uh, a video in each of these two boxes and the way you do that is by selecting a, an end screen and if I select that one then you'll see what it'll do is it's loaded up these different elements now they don't have to all come in at the same time but I basically have a video coming in at the top uh, right and then I usually have a playlist coming in at the bottom right which is relevant to whatever the topic is I've only got say five or six different playlists that I generally uh, have for the sort of content that I'm creating so I just put the most relevant one down there and then the uh, top one is a video you can add elements here by clicking on this plus you can have up to four sort of those larger elements and then also you can add your subscribe button so I have my subscribe button coming up uh, slightly later because I do my little outro uh, and that for five seconds and then the last 15 seconds it shows the videos staying on the uh, there and also at 15 seconds out the uh, subscribe button comes up so that is what I do as I say, I've explained this in a lot more depth and how to set all the timings up and everything like that in that other video, but you can basically add either a video, a playlist, or you can actually link to another channel if you want to do that. And when you get to a certain level in terms of subscribers in uh, YouTube, I think it's linked to that anyway, then you can also put external links to websites and things like that. So that is uh, how you add in the end scenes. But as I say, there's a much more thorough video on that. Uh, so I'm just gonna come back out of this. In fact, let me click save. 
but the cards, you just come into here and I'll click on this little pencil icon next to where it says cards. So this is where we're going to add in these little info cards or the little links that come up part way through your videos. And here you have a, uh, an option to add in either a video. So if you want to link to one of your own videos or you want to link to a playlist. In fact, it doesn't have to be one of your own videos. Uh, and also a channel if you want to link to an external channel. Uh, and then also you've got this one to add a link to a website or whatever. But as I say, that needs to be, uh, you need to be at a certain level in terms of number of subscribers in order for that to be active. Uh, but simply you click on, let's say I want to link to one of my other videos. You just simply click the uh, button here. Uh, notice also that we've got a little TubeBuddy thing that said apply a template. So once again, you can create templates and things like that in TubeBuddy to automatically add certain videos and certain links in at certain times. So uh, that's something to bear in mind with TubeBuddy. But like I say, I'm going to show you how to do this manually. Uh, now, in terms of adding a specific video, uh, you've basically got two search boxes at the, at the top and then you've got a series of videos, which is all, all of your videos underneath or a selection of them. Uh, and then you can search either search for your own video or you could search for any other video on YouTube. So if you want to link to somebody else's video, you can do that as well. But let's say I just want to uh, link to uh, this one, which is uh, one I did all about how you can do uh, on-screen telestration uh, using uh, an iPad linked to Ecamm Live. So you can see that I've selected that and it's dropped in the uh, video there. And that is how it would look on the screen suggested. And then it's got the title of the video up at the top and then a little info button. And people, when they click on that, it would take them through to uh, that video. Now the uh, timestamp uh, has come up with a 0000, zero, zero, zero to start with. Uh, but as you can see, it says uh, minutes, seconds and frames is the split there. So don't get fooled into thinking that's hours, minutes and seconds. Uh, if you know the timestamp because you've either in the editing, you know where it comes or you've uh, sadly had to sit through watching yourself <laughs> like I'm going to have to do and you know the uh, the exact time that it is then you can just put the time in there and as I say just remember it is in minutes and seconds and then that is frames so the exact number of frames in that second if you whatever your frame rate is mine's 30 frames per second in case you're interested so I could actually put it down to that level of uh, of granularity but I tend to just put it in roughly and approximately using the old minutes and seconds method and leave the frames alone uh, I'm never needing feel the need to be quite that precise with it but rather than have it show the uh, the full title like that you can also add a custom message in so you can put the uh, the custom message and the teaser text. The teaser text, although it comes second, is the text that will appear here. So if I put uh, in this bit, this is my video. That is what appears here. The uh, custom message is uh, what will appear in the actual information box. So, uh, uh, hello, check out my video. There we go. I didn't really need to type all that, did I? But there you go. And as you can see, you've got a 30 character limit on uh, the teaser text and also on the um, uh, the custom message as well. So the teaser text is the one that you'll see on screen or your viewers will see. And then the uh, custom message is what will appear when they click on the little information box before they actually go over to view that uh, that video. And as you can see, it, uh, if I put a time on here, so let me say I'll put this at 20 seconds. 20 seconds if I can type the number two for a moment <laughs> uh, it is not allowing me to type that for, one, for some reason just one second well there was me I was trying to type in 20 minutes and I only uploaded a uh, two minute video so what I should probably try and do is actually type something that is within the time limit so uh, the video was about a minute long that I did as a sample so if I just come in here and type 20 seconds in there <laughs> that's a bit better uh, I thought I was going mad for a moment <laughs> so what that's done is it's moved that little marker out there to uh, 20 seconds along in the timeline just to give you a little visual of exactly where it ap appears in your overall uh, timeline uh, and then as I say, you can just add more of these. You can collapse this one 
uh, up by pressing the little arrow there and then you can add another card and as I say you can add a link to a playlist as well if you want and it's the exact same process so you can link to a channel or a playlist so just to quickly show you this one if I wanted to link to a particular playlist it brings up a list of all your playlists and let's say I'm going to link to my uh, stream deck one or my YouTube channel tools maybe and I'll add that one in there and then there it's popped in and again I can just put the time in. You can also just drag the timestamp as well uh, so that's fine but uh, obviously you do need to know uh, where you're going to put it before you, uh, you drag it. So then I'll click on save. So now we have got our, our, uh, our cards in, those are called cards. So now we've got our cards in and uh, we've got a few more of our best practices uh, complete and we've added our end screen, we've added our cards and so on. Now there are a couple of other best practices which aren't actually specifically uh, named in here. So I just want to talk about those as well. So when you come down to the bottom, a bit further down than the uh, the tags, then you'll have some other information. Now actually as a default, some of this might not show up. So what you'll notice is there will be a little show more. In fact, it's here at the moment it says show less. So sometimes when you come in, it will say show more and uh, if I just come down there we go click on it down there now uh, in this one uh, we've got a little checkbox there this video contains paid promotion like a product placement sponsorship or endorsement so if you are taking uh, sponsorships or things like that then uh, that's where you would just toggle that one on or off uh, and then we've already covered the tags. This is the TubeBuddy interface. And now there is another section down here, which is language for captions. So uh, we've got the video language. So do make sure that you uh, select that. Uh, you've also got some caption certification, which is uh, basically saying that it is never aired on US television. Uh, as you can see that there's a few different options in here when it finally appears. <laughs> uh, so the options are this content has never aired on television in the US uh, or it has, uh, one second, decided to shut itself down again. <laughs> this content has only ever aired on television in the US without captions and so on and so on. So there's lots of different options there. I'm guessing that for most people uh, their content will be new and unique and so it will just be uh, that first option. Uh, the next option down is the, whoops, there we go. Uh, the next option down is for the language of the title and description. So again, do get into the habit of uh, selecting these. But if you recall, or maybe you don't because you maybe haven't watched it, but in that video that I talked about earlier that I did all about the YouTube settings, you can select defaults for these. So you would do that at that stage and have these default to uh, whatever the language is that you your videos were in and your descriptions. Uh, next is recording date and location. Uh, so add, it says add when and where your video was recorded. Viewers can search for videos by location uh, and also by date. So the date that they were recorded. So you may want to add those in as well. Uh, I actually do my recording date usually. Uh, but because my videos are pretty sort of location agnostic, if that is a word, <laughs> it doesn't really matter where they were recorded uh, for the sort of content that I'm producing. So I usually leave that one blank. Uh, here you can change your... Uh, license type either creative commons or the youtube standard license i have mine as creative commons uh, you've got allow embedding uh, to allow other people to Im or yourself to embed your videos so i do embed my videos on my website uh, which if you haven't already seen is uh, takeonetech.io so if you head over there you will see uh, up at the top there for example on my uh, home page then there is one of these videos up at the top uh, and then i've also got a page of my videos where i feature some of the videos that i make and uh, incidentally that is a great way if you do want to get in touch then you can head over to my website and there's a contact page there and then also if i'm online at the time there is a little chat bot which features in the bottom right hand corner of the uh, website site as well so uh, yeah if you haven't been already then do go over and check that out and uh, feel free to send me any feedback or anything like that, that you want to do through there uh, but this is where you would need to have this switched on if you did want to allow these videos to be embedded anywhere so that's just one thing uh, publish subscription fees uh, feed and notify subscribers uh, is that is if you are actually taking subscriptions on your YouTube channel. Again, you have to have reached a certain number of subscribers to be open to that, but you can select uh, videos to be published just to your subscribers in that way. 
Uh, allow people to sample the content. That means that people can take your videos and they can sample it and make shorts out of it and things like that. Uh, but it will always be uh, always be linked back to your original content anyway. So uh, I have that one switched on. Uh, you've got the uh, category here. So these are the standard YouTube categories. Uh, that you can choose from and uh, so this is depending on obviously the sort of uh, uh, videos that you are producing will depend on the category that you've got them uh, and then here we've got some things about commenting uh, again these things can be selected as global settings so do go back and watch that video about the general YouTube settings if you have not done already but this is just about whether you allow comments whether you hold them for a review or whatever uh, and then also you can show or hide how many viewers have liked or disliked this video uh, personally, I don't see the point of hiding it <laughs> because it is at the end of the day giving feedback on the video. So if you've, uh, unless you're producing content that nobody's liking and you're getting lots of thumbs down, <laughs> then you may want to hide that. But uh, I don't know, personally, I just leave that on all the time. But I mention all of these things because this one in particular about the language is one important one because when you come back up to the top, you also have the option to uh, add subtitles. So uh, I'm sure you've seen videos that have popped up and maybe even some of your own videos that have popped up where they've got subtitles on them. Well, YouTube will add subtitles to your videos automatically, uh, but you do have the option to go in and edit them. And so here where it says subtitles assuming that you have got the uh, the text uh, selected as the language has been selected then you can go in here and you can actually edit your uh, subtitles so that's what I'm going to do now now uh, YouTube, as I say, will generate uh, captions, but as you can see, it says it takes some time for this to happen because obviously I've just uploaded this video, so it'll take some time for the uh, captions to be generated. Once, once they've uploaded, you can go back in and edit them. And apparently, uh, so I've heard, a little birdie has told me, uh, a birdie by the name of Mr. Dot Rock, <laughs> uh, that you will actually get uh, credit for going back in and editing your uh, captions even the ones that have been created by YouTube so uh, just going back in and editing them it will just make it will assume that you have uh, been through and checked everything and even by making a few minor adjustments to it will just assume as I say that they are checked and are more uh, accurate and more relevant and so this will help your video in terms of the, uh, the ratings that it gets I suppose by the algorithm but there is another way to do it which is to actually upload your own captions and there are a few different ways that you can do this, uh, but I'm going to uh, dig into this in a little bit more detail and start using a service called Descript, and then I'll leave a, a video about that because I have been using Descript already, uh, which is a re really quite an interesting program where you can drop in videos or audios and it will create all the captions for you, but then you can actually edit the video content or the audio content by simply editing the text. So it means you can go and re remove filler words like ums and ers and things like that, or you can even add in new bits of text and the AI uh, artificial intelligence within the app will actually add in your voice to add in those extra sections. So uh, not so sure how well that works for video, but, but I have used it for, uh, for my audio podcast to uh, re remove some filler words or just some gaps in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, in the delivery just like I was doing there really uh, so it is something that I've used for that but I hadn't actually used it for creating captions so that's one of my missions for this week actually is to really dig into it and I will report back on my findings but yeah adding in captions yourself is uh, certainly for from a search engine optimization point of view and a sort of uh, YouTube algorithm <laughs> if you believe in such things uh, then it does certainly help with that so that is just something that I wanted to mention as another best practice so that about covers all of the uh, the best practices that TubeBuddy's recommended. It also includes a couple of other best practices in terms of adding in those uh, those subtitles, those closed captions. Uh, and then that is about it in terms of the upload process. Uh, there is also here, you can obviously change the visibility from unlisted to private or whatever. You can change that after the effect. And if you have got any... Uh, sort of content restrictions or anything like that copyright claims then just so that you know those will appear here I did start out on my YouTube journey with a uh, an Adobe stock subscription which I already had uh, and that gave me access to some music through Epidemic uh, but through Adobe but it meant that every time I uploaded a video I had to manually go in and enter my license code and that's why I ultimately ended up going with the the full Epidemic uh, subscription in the end instead because now I never have to worry about this box 
with my content being flagged for uh, copyright infringement. So that is about all for this video. But like I say, do go ahead and check out those other videos that I've done about uh, YouTube. Uh, and if you found this useful, then please do go ahead and give it a like and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. It does, uh, it does help that this channel and it also helps me knowing that I'm heading in the right direction because this is all just a learning process for me as much as it is for you, I'm sure as well. <laughs> and also if you know anybody else who might benefit from this uh, content, then do go ahead and share it with them as well. Now, speaking of more videos, as I say, I do have a YouTube playlist. Uh, as I, uh, <laughs> By YouTube playlist, I mean content on my YouTube channel related to YouTube channels. <laughs> so that's where you'll find all of the videos that I've mentioned here today as well anyway. And I'll leave a link to that playlist over at the bottom right hand corner and another suitably good video up in the top right. So have a great day and I'll see you again soon.